one. Greetings, my name is Jace Hargis, and I'd like to share a little overview of this concept of assessment and especially focusing on um, creating analytical rubrics. This is our second step in the Wiggins McTie backward design model that we use frequently. Uh, we previously on a video talked about writing effective learning outcomes. This is the second step at looking at evidence or assessment. And then we'll talk later about uh, what we do with those in creating active learning environments. So I want to start off um, briefly talking about a bit of an operational definition of these three terms that we'll use quite a bit. But, but assessment in itself, out of context, can mean a lot of things. But the way that we're going to use this is that assessment is this gathering of behaviors. And the behaviors could be anywhere from you know, taking a test or it could be actually some sort of a practical thing that a student is doing to, um, uh, to demonstrate their knowledge, skills, or disposition. From that, we hope that we have a set of criteria uh, that we're going to basically compare to see what that assessment means to us and then ultimately make a judgment on that. That measurement portion will be uh, typically in the form of a rubric that we'll show you some examples of. Just really basically, uh, briefly, the American Association, American Association of Higher Ed has come out with some good practices. Certainly you can pause this or read all these you'd like. Obviously you begin with the values, you have a clear purpose. The one that I like is the one that I put in red, this concept of Assessment isn't something that it starts and stops. It really should be episodic. It should be ongoing. We should be constantly creating and, and organizing some sort of uh, an assessment, different ways of that we can look at, which I'll show you next. Um, we, we look at this typically in two different ways, two broad ways, um, formative and summative. Formative is, is in the formation of learning something, so it's information that you collect uh, on, on students' behaviors and provide them timely feedback so they can consider how they might modify that in understanding it more clearly, whereas summative is something that's done at the end uh, to determine what they know before you might move on to uh, another course, another topic. Lots and lots of ways to assess. Typically we think about some of these as just a traditional exam or maybe a quiz, but you can see by all of these different possibilities, and I'm sure that there's more, but, but doing some projects, some artifacts, um, practicals, obviously creating some experiential service uh, type experiences. So these all come with um, a bit of a um, situation where you have to think about how you can actually assess these consistently, repeatedly, in a fair way. Uh, some of the things we might think about when we're doing this is, is at what level are we trying to assess? How are we scaffolding up uh, students' conceptual knowledge of these? Bloom is a very popular taxonomy to use. Um, I don't want to be really hardcore on, on this, but basically this is just a guide. So basically thinking about what concepts align well with maybe some of the knowledge and comprehension, others with application analysis, and, and, and even others uh, synthesis. So one of the struggles is if we want to try to do something that might be less than traditional, less than a multiple choice, is how do we assess that in a very consistent way? Well, rubrics allow us to do some of this. They, they, they're the bridge between the learning outcome and those behaviors. Uh, there's something that both students and uh, faculty should use, and it's this common language that we should present very transparently ahead of time so the students can determine uh, their own success and how much energy and effort they want to put into that particular assignment. Some real basic examples. Um, rubrics come in all shapes and all sizes. This happens to be one from uh, the ABET on, on engineering. There's another one uh, for engineering lab reports. You'll see some differences. You'll have narratives. Sometimes you'll have uh, qualifiers. Sometimes you'll have points. You'll have another one, uh, which is a critical thinking. You'll actually have some grades. All of these things, um, I always remind people, don't let the format drive you. Figure out what it is, what those criteria are, and then you know, turn these into those kind of concepts and the criteria that it is that you know will help students uh, be successful at that topic. Um, I always recommend this, kind of, this website called Rubistar. Here's the website for that, but this is literally a, a, an online rubric tool. It's not perfect, but it really does a good job at taking you from a blank sheet of paper to organizing some of the uh, attributes that you'd like to do for a particular assignment. Thank you very much. That's a quick overview of assessment and analytical rubrics.